Now, as a means of pursuing that, mm. you meditate and you learn to meditate. Yes. But you don't pray in, in the way that, say, a Christian would. Mm. I, I, th I think we have to be a little bit careful here because one has to do justice to other faiths. I'm, I'm sure you agree with that. Eh? Um, popularly, prayer in Christianity is petitionary prayer. You ask for benefits and blessings. Eh? Mm. That sort of prayer is not found in, in Buddhism. We don't ask the Buddha for any material benefit. Eh? But Christians will probably point out that even in Christianity there are higher forms of prayer, uh, contemplative prayer or prayer even without words, without petition. Perhaps there one could say there is a little bit of, of common ground. One doesn't want to ignore that fact. Eh? Mm. But broadly speaking in Buddhism, what we call meditation takes the, the place of prayer. But there is definitely a devotional and, as it were, worshipful aspect of Buddhism. Uh, there are some Buddhists in, in the West, I mean, outside their own movement, who are not happy with this aspect of Buddhism, eh? which is, of course, strongly traditional. But we are very happy with it. We feel that uh, intellectual development and emotional development in the form of devotion must go hand in hand. So we have... When you say worshipful, mm. though, yeah. given that the Buddha is not a god, yes. what are you worshipping? Ah, uh, here there's a sort of assumption which is often encountered that worship is only directed towards God. Hmm? So that if Buddhists worship, they must be worshipping God or must be seeing the Buddha as God. We yes. totally deny this. Yes. Buddhists generally totally deny this. Yes. Uh, they say that the Buddha is an enlightened human being. He is not God, but we worship him. Who else should we worship? What does worship mean? Worship means the, the flowing, as it were, of all your profoundest devotional feelings towards the highest embodiment of your spiritual ideal. So we feel devotion for the Buddha. We, we worship the Buddha, but the Buddha is not God. <laughs> this is rather difficult for people in the West often to understand because they associate worship inseparably, in their minds, with theism. In Buddhism, it is not so associated. There is worship in the fullest sense. Buddhists really do worship the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha. But that does not imply any theistic element whatsoever. Hmm? So one is not hmm. worshipping a statue any more than one is worshipping a, hmm. a personification? No, it's not an abstract personification, and it's certainly not just a statue. I mean, even the most ignorant Buddhist would realize that hmm. he's not bowing down to that particular hmm. piece of wood or stone. Huh? Uh, but yes, worship occupies a very important place in traditional Buddhism. And I think among Buddhist groups in the West, we probably are alone in stressing the importance of devotion because we feel the emotions are so important. Eh? In, in this country, in, in England especially, as we deal with people, we're constantly coming up against this question of the emotions, that many people in England seem out of touch with their emotions. They don't seem really to feel. Eh? If they're happy, they're not really happy. If they're sad, they're not really sad. Even at a funeral, they might feel grieved. They don't really allow themselves to feel the grief. We, we regard it as very important that one should feel one's emotions, especially what we call positive emotions of, of love and compassion and joy and worship and devotion. So we encourage this whole, perhaps more colorful, devotional side of Buddhism. And we have not just meditation, not just study, not just lectures. We have pujas, which are acts of devotion. 